Oh yeah. Hella and she her. I'm Jackie Jerkhart. I use she her pronouns. I go by Jackie. I'm Flow Rider. I go by Flow. She her pronouns. So it's played on an oval, first of all. Basically, it's two 30 minute halves. Each 30 minute half is divided up into two minute gyms. So at least every two minutes, we reset everything. So the most you're ever going at a time is two minutes. The way that each jam, each two minute period starts is you get each team fields four blockers mm -hmm. and they line up on a certain line and they each field one jammer that lines up behind them. So you've got one team, one team, and they each have blockers and a jammer. When the whistle blows, the jammers are trying to make their way through the opposing packs. So this jammer gets a point for every one of these blockers that she passes, or they pass, sorry. And then this blocker will get a point for every blocker on this team that they pass. And every jammer, thank you. Every one of these. So you, the people on here, the people here are trying to get through. The people here are trying to make sure that the opposite team doesn't get through while making sure their team does. And you can keep going around for those two minutes. It gets a little bit more complicated because um, it doesn't always last two minutes. Um, the jammers are our are, are point scorers and yes. they wear yeah. a cover over their helmet that has a star on it. We're thinking about time and control of time and control of our bodies and other people's bodies. One of the big differences I'd say between what people perceived derby to be and what it is now, I think it used to be a lot more of a spectacle sport, like about yeah. this woman hitting hard and doing this. Now it's a lot more strategic. Um, so we do have set plays and that's what we were working on today was like our starts and mm -hmm. having a specific way that you start to make it more likely so your jammer gets through first and you hold their jammer. Any advice for people who might want to go into the sport? Do it. Do it. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Do it. Take the small wins. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt, but it gets better. But you're gonna come, really like it? Yeah, come learn, yeah. learn to skate. We have learn to skate days, which are just like one or two sessions. And then we have a whole intro program that lasts like eight weeks that teaches you not only how to skate, how to fall right, but like some basic moves, um, what kind of stops to use and when, because the way that you skate outside on the street is very different to the way that you skate in here when you're close to that many people. So even when we see someone like skating brand new, there's, there's teams that'll be like, that'll hold learn to skate and be like, oh, we're only probably gonna like, only five people are gonna stick with it, right? Which is true, but there's also, but if we don't invest in every single person that comes in the space, none of them are going to stay. Um, so it is like, it's, be, it's really nice to be able to give that to the community, but we also, we get a lot from that back. Mm -hmm. There are skaters starting at eight years old. Those kids are going to mop the floor with us by the yes. time they're our age. However, there are also skaters starting at 50. Like, yeah. you can start whenever. Which is equally as impressive. Yes, exactly. I think, yeah. I think one of the things that I really value about Derby, and I used to give this as an answer in job interviews all the time, I don't remember. Um, I think what, one of the things that Derby has given to me is like I don't necessarily have that the idea that like life's gonna pass me by or that like I'm gonna stop being there, there comes a time where I can't do the things that I love because I think from when I started at 18 I had role models of every age and also I think it does help that there a lot of them are like we have a lot of other things in common as well like maybe we're both women maybe we are in the same field like stuff like that I think it really helps us, it helps me that I kind of know about all my teammates' lives, but then we put all that shit to the side and we play the same game with the same intensity and we have the same goals. Yeah. I think it's, because so many people get in that tunnel where they only see people who look and talk and have their job and whatever else. Yeah. Three words that you would like use to describe Derby. Ooh. Intense, humbling. My body said intense. I was like, I also had intense. Okay. <laughs> These are not necessarily the words, but something to the tune of like fun, hard, family. Joy, okay. Joy, okay, son. <laughs> <laughs> one third of the time, mm. you should be having the time of your life. One third of the time, it should be fine. And one third of the time, it's going to fucking suck. And that's sort of how you do your checks and balances. Am I working hard enough, but am I still getting enough out of it? 
um, and I would say this is very true of Derby, right? I, I will have weeks where I'm like, why am I here? I hate this. My body hurts. No one's nice. And then I have the next week, not no one's nice. That's me being <laughs> overreactive, no, but, but it feels like yeah, that. sometimes it feels like that. And then the next week I'll be like, yay. Why are y'all passionate about the sport? Because you definitely all are. So my go-to is roller derby truly is a space for everybody, like literally everybody. Uh, growing up, you know, typical body dysmorphia, verge of eating disorder issues kind of deal. And I got to roller derby and like literally every body type has a way that they can do well and like when I have taken breaks from derby, I have seen a drastic drop in my self-confidence. My family is all in Atlanta. Like I said, I've been a part of a whole bunch of leagues. And there's something I think, I think it is something about hitting each other and being so close in our space. Like, you make such fast friends. <laughs> like, right, I work with my coworkers every day. I trust them a whole lot less than yeah. someone I skate with like three times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, right, like, we're putting life and limb in each other's hands a lot of time. The funny answer that I usually tell everyone, which is also 100% true, is uh, being a teacher right now is one of the most difficult things that I think I have ever, in 42 years, have had to go through in my life. Um, I am verbally and physically assaulted on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, so I enjoy assaulting other people. And I say that with like, all the love and genuine caring that I could possibly say. But I also like the competition. I like um, try doing something that I never knew how to do and figuring out how like my body can make those things happen. And so just like the experience and the knowledge and figuring this stuff out and doing that with a community of people that everyone wants the best for themselves but also everyone else that's there. Yes is something that is really powerful and it's not something unfortunately that I see in my day-to-day -day life even with my own colleagues and so that's um, what brings me back yeah. even though the healing time takes a little bit longer <laughs> and I'm sore a little bit longer yeah but I think what you said about like the physicality the I feel like so much of especially adult life is like restraint and this is like the place where you you don't go apeshit, but you go the life shit, yeah. To come here and, you know, focus on ourselves and get some of that frustration with the systems of the world out is really yeah. great.